Who y'all? KSYM, San Antonio College Radio. This is the Urban Suite D Major, Cheryl Metal, and as promised, for our first open mic session this evening, we have a San Antonio based artist, and mm -hmm. uh, we're so lucky to have him in studio with us. Well, please welcome Little Giant to the Urban Suite. How are you this evening? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing great. Glad to have you here. Um, Thank the lady next to you. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so much for making this happen. Dude, you're so welcome. Thank you. It's so amazing Thank to have you, you so here. Much. Well, um, I'll just speak for her right now. If it wasn't for the work that you're doing and all the great music you're putting out, it wouldn't have attracted her, which she would have told me. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. thing, things things happen for, for a reason. So yes. it's, we're fortunate to have you here. Thank you. I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. It's amazing. So, um, originally from the tone? Yes, born and raised here. Born and raised here. My whole life. Born from the tone, yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Um, a little bit of your, a uh, little bit of background, childhood. Um, what were just some of your earliest influences? You know, what's, what sparked the, uh, the bug first off? Um, getting into music. Um, well, my dad's always loved music, so mm -hmm. I've always had access to that, and I started listening to music, or I started really engaging in the music like around 2007, so this is when like 106 or Park was still around, like yeah. it was on its like final edge and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the two rappers that I heard that made me go, oh wow, what is this, like what is this genre, is uh, Lil Wayne and Kanye. Okay. My first CD I ever bought was The Card 3. But the person who really put me into it was Eminem. And Word. through and through Eminem, I found out about so many other artists. But I can go on and on. I mean, even aside from hip hop, like Michael Jackson was mm -hmm. an amazing, is, is and still is like an amazing inspiration. To Absolutely. Me. Yeah, I mean, um, that's, for what Michael Jackson has done for the industry, um, very few people can even attempt to reach. It's never be duplicated. Never. never. That's a once-in-a-lifetime type of artist right there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you even have concerts like that ever again. Where no. You got hundred, hun literally hundreds of thousands of people literally, fainting. Literally, just by standing. Just by standing. <laughs> just by standing. Just his aura. And it's stuff like that, like, uh, like unattainable stuff that I always strive for. Because mm -hmm. I feel like... Stuff that's attainable, I'm always, I'm, I'm get addicted, I'm gonna want more and more. But if it's something I can't attain, like being called the greatest, it's something I need to earn. Mm -hmm. And it comes with years and years of work. So I'm always chasing that. Yeah. I'm always chasing that. Uh, some of your dad's uh, music choices kind of rubbed off on you as well when you were growing up? <laughs> yeah. Um, he used to, he was really into like the No Limit stuff, like, oh, word. like Trick Daddy, uh, Master P. Uh, loved a lot of the Houston rap, like um, SPM and all that stuff. So I listened to that through him, mm -hmm. um, and just found my own type of taste, like as I got older. But yeah, yeah definitely grew up with that also. Okay. Um, so when was your uh, first time actually attempting to put pen to paper to develop your own rhyme scheme, rhyme style? Yeah, so it was, a, I was 11 years old, so it was probably like, uh, wow. like around 2011, 12, something like that. I was okay. in fifth grade, and um, I had just bought the Marshall Mathers OP2, okay. and I don't know, I was just real inspired by it, and then I downloaded this app that had like, <laughs> that had like free beats and stuff, and I wrote this song, and that was my first attempt there, but I loved how it sounded. I, lo I love like... How it made me feel it made me feel like empowered it made me feel like because like i've always dealt with like heightened stuff i mean i'm not that short but still like for a man you know yeah. i've always dealt with that but when i wrote whenever i would write whenever i rap i just none of that matters like i just feel so empowered like yeah you know what i mean yeah um well i can't say much i'm short dude too <laughs> short <laughs> king stand up short <laughs> king yes but it's good that you know you started to develop your own deal, and um, that kind of brought out a bit of confidence. Sounds like yes, a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. a lot of confidence. Um, and as time went on, you know, just by just through Eminem, just listening to other rappers, like I said, 
I mentioned off air, LL Cool J was another one. Mm -hmm. Like, true, man, legend, like, you know, so. true, really, like LL living legend, you know, like, and through him, like, I don't know, he was just so fierce, like the way he was able to be vulnerable, like with songs like I, I Need Love and Hey mm -hmm. Lover, but then like he'll come out with something like I Shot You or like 4321, you know? And I've always admired that because it's like, how can you be like like a heartthrob, but then like, you know, like just get at their heads at the same time. And like, that was just always so crazy to me. Eminem and LL Cool J have always been unapologetically themselves. Yeah. And I took a lot of inspiration from that which led me to be where I'm at now. Good, good. Well, definitely two great people to uh, um, get inspiration and in, not necessarily emulate, but like I said, you know, to follow and get um, ideas and inspirations to even, you know, work on your own stuff. That's yeah. Definitely two true, true, uh, true, true people to follow. Yeah. Um, how long did it take you to kind of develop your rhyme style uh, and kind of bounce uh, ideas off of people and see what they thought about mm. you know. so I've always kind of like uh, wrote on and off since I was 11 but mm -hmm. I really started taking it really serious like around when I was like 16 Okay. and I had dropped my first song to any OG listening out here um, I had dropped my first song April 17th 2018 it was a song called 18 to infinity Okay. with um, my friend at the time his name was uh, Jesse but he called himself Lil Ark and we dropped that song and I love the reaction. But I say all that to say, as time went on, I felt like I was still trying to find myself. It, mm -hmm. Like I was like still kind of biting off of people, trying to find me who I really am. Yeah. And it didn't start until like maybe I was like, like four mixtapes in and I dropped this mixtape called The Re-Up. And, and when I hear that, that's when I hear like, I found myself, like I found my style, I found my voice, I found my rhyme patterns, like I found all of that, like it, it was just this thing where everything just started clicking. Mm -hmm. And then as time went on, I just got better and better and better. So around like a year in, that's okay. where I found myself. Wow. And you were already four mixtapes uh, yeah, in? Yeah, four mixtapes in. So I dropped like wow. three, I dropped three in 2018 and then, wow. and then 2019 I dropped like, three again and then I took like a little break because of COVID and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then I've been on the road since like since 2022 I've been on okay. the road since well well even early on um putting out three mixtapes uh in a year's time for uh, uh just starting out that's that's pretty good yeah that's that's a definite uh work work ethic right there yeah I get complimented for that a lot and that's something that I picked off um, from two artists. I picked off from Tupac and Prince. Uh huh. Oh, that, Prince. That, wow. That yeah. that that Volt mentality, just having a bunch of songs and just working on music constantly. Mm -hmm. So you're always one step ahead, and that's why I always feel like I'm one step ahead. Like, like right now I got a project going on, but I'm thinking of what comes after that and singles <laughs> and stuff like that. Like yeah. you know, like I'm always thinking ahead. Like I said, that's that's a definitely good work uh, work ethic and a uh, way to uh, set yourself up for your future. Yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into some music. Of course. All right. Hey, y'all, stay tuned. More coming up in this block of music. We have brand new music from Ralph Lauren and Love B. But let's go ahead and get into another track from Little Giant. This is "I Don't Want to Be Alone." Great track as well. Hey, y'all, stay tuned. More coming up. Do not go anywhere. This is the Urban Suite, KSYM, San Antonio College Radio.